Well, it's certainly been a roller coaster week for the markets. And joining us to talk about why is Justin Urquhart Stewart, the investment manager and business commentator. Lovely to have you here with us, Justin. So, as, as we heard from our correspondent, uh, the message from Europe's leaders very much that. Uh, their banks are stable. Are we out of the woods yet? No, there's still somewhere to go. But there's one word that runs an economy and runs the markets, confidence. And of course, confidence has been really shaken by all of this. Uh, but nonetheless, you actually see what's going on, because what we've had in the world over the past few years, from the banking crisis, from the war in Ukraine, uh, with the inflation issues, actually, you know, things have actually stood up really quite well. We're now getting interest rates back to the level they should be at. Uh, we were on emergency rates for far too long. But it's also one thing to look at. The global economy, despite all the headlines, is still growing. Um, so actually, I'm quite encouraged by all of this, but there'll be some more nerves, and you'll see some of the weaker players, as you saw with Credit Suisse, and you saw a couple of American banks, they'll go, because they're badly run, and they deserve to go. I mean, you can understand investors uh, getting a touch of the vapors, and you talk about Credit Suisse uh, and the UBS merger, $17 billion worth of bonds wiped off uh, by the Swiss regulator. I mean, what, what signal does it send to investors that these, these huge monoliths, these Swiss banks yeah. that we've trusted for a hundred years, are a bit dodgy. Well, I, I must say the embarrassment for the Swiss. I mean, you know, this is what they've been, been, it's banks and cuckoo clocks. Well, there go the banks, back to the cuckoo clocks. Um, so it's, no, they're really embarrassed by all of this. But, but Credit Suisse has had problems for a long time indeed. Um, but wiping that amount, those bonds being wiped out, that is really very painful them indeed. Deutsche Bank, it's not in the same position, but it's one that's had concerns over the years. But a lot of the other big banks have already been well looked at by the regulators. And in the past two weeks, that's exactly what they've been doing with a fine tooth game going through where are the risky ones and the ones to look at tend to be the smaller newcomers who frankly don't have the same experience they've probably been over lending and with low interest rates and don't really understand the risks they got which is exactly what you saw uh, with uh, with the American banks there now lending to the, those tech companies didn't really understand how much well the tech was the fashion fad and remember this year's fashion fad is next year's tank top mm. I've got too many of those <laughs> Uh, let's talk about interest rates. You said uh, you thought they were uh, where they should be now. We had uh, the UK raising interest rates yesterday. Do you think that's the end of it? It depends if inflation is going to stay at, at these sort of levels. We all thought inflation would start coming down a bit. Worryingly, core inflation is still there. But remember, the calculation is just month by month by month. So the peak periods of last year start dropping off. So with a bit of luck, we should start to see that coming down again. Uh, rates really don't need to go that much higher because as it comes to the stage, you want to control inflation. But equally, when you're trying to get the economy to keep going, you can't put rates up too much. So we're round about there now. What we now need to have is no more bank Collapse, please. Thank you very much indeed. A level of confidence and the purchasing managers' indices in Europe and in America, both of which are actually showing positive signs. That's an encouraging sign. If the consumer still wanting to go out and spend, then that's good. What are the consequences of the wobbles in the financial sector? What's the likelihood of that transferring to other industries? Well, we've got uh, the issues in terms of those who've overborrowed uh, and actually find themselves in a position there where they're now having to pay more in terms of rates um, uh, and interest going back um, and they're not seeing growth in their businesses. So a classic case here, you were talking about the car industry there. And the car industry really is it's yesterday's industry to a great extent. You know, actually, we're quite lucky in Britain and where you had to focus there on actually more of the technology side, that's where you're going to see greater growth and that's where you need more investment coming through. So what you're going to see now is actually banks now being cutting back on lending. Uh, they mustn't cut back too much because you still need more coming through. Uh, they're going to be more risk averse and that's probably quite sensible to be doing as well. What you do need to make sure though is make sure the consumer has enough confidence to still be spending. Um, and in places like the States, dependent upon housing, same also to a great extent in the United Kingdom. Um, and of course the UK has also got its own issues because of Brexit and elements like that. Um, but even so it looks as though that's sort of being managed its way through somehow. I'm not quite sure how they managed to sort out the rural Irish issue but somehow how it's um, got there, mind you, with a change of leadership, that made a bit of a relief. So you talked about the importance of, of confidence in, in many different ways. Uh, what about investors' confidence? Do you think it will come back, particularly after these EU leaders trying to reassure everyone? Yeah, I mean, the investors, are, you know, they, uh, they need some persuading to actually sit there and say, I'm going to go back in. But already you can start sitting there and some of the sort of the hedge, hedge managers going back in, and those actually have quite a good reputation. Be careful, because if they're announcing they're going back in, they're just trying to encourage you to actually support their bets. Um, but certainly you've seen there people going and buying, say, for instance, uh, UBS on the basis that they've picked up a bank for free. Um, and uh, so, no, there will, be, uh, there will be more money coming back in. 
Jim. Bear in mind, of course, people make most money not actually on just shares going up and down like a yo-yo. It's actually what you're getting in terms of the compounding of the dividends over time. Teaching people that long-term investing is a slow, steady thing. Now, rule one, don't lose the sodding stuff. Rule two, refer to rule one. The, the old trick, of course, in steadying the ship is to try and avoid recession. The Bank yep. of England uh, Governor Andrew Bailey uh, gave a speech today suggesting that uh, there's a pretty strong likelihood, he said, the UK will avoid a recession this year. Um, What's your take? It's going to be very, very thin indeed. You know, we were saying you know, it's two quarters of, of a shrinking economy. We've been pretty close to that. Um, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if we do see a period of very slow growth, maybe even recession. No, that doesn't really matter. Well, it does matter if it suddenly stops and goes down significantly so. What, would that occur? Well, if we had more inflation, if we had uh, issues in Ukraine getting considerably worse, then we will find ourselves in a, in a difficult situation. But as we are at the moment, actually it's looking encouraging. It's not going to be wildly positive, but actually what you could find is the markets start getting a little bit more uh, confidence back into it. But this is going to be no bull market for the time being. Wait, if you're a private investor at the moment, wait for these fears to pass through. There'll be time to go back in, just let other people worry, and then you can go back in and get yourself a bargain. Justin, great to see you. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts today. That's Justin Urquhart-Stewart, investment manager and business commentator.